Hey guys, welcome back to the knife shop. Uh, I'm Neil with Malone Knives and I just wanted to do a quick video and show you guys how I etch uh, my maker's mark into steel and also how you can make your own homemade etching machine uh, with just a few simple tools. So the first thing you're going to need is a battery charger. Um, what I use is an old battery maintainer. Uh, this is made for motorcycles, ATVs, stuff like that, just to keep the battery charged and maintained uh, while it's sitting in storage or in your garage. Um, it's important that you have a charger that's either on or off, uh, meaning it does not have fault protection built into the charger. Uh, I've got a newer style battery charger that I've tried to use and the newer ones have that fault protection built in so uh, essentially when it detects a short it turns the charger off. That style charger is not going to work so you're going to need something similar to this. Um, what I refer to as the old school chargers uh, that's simply on or off. Um, You'll need a bolt of some sort. I've got, this is just an old carriage bolt that I had laying around the shop. Um, I make a wand, is what I call it, uh, out of it to, this is what you're actually going to use to uh, make the etch onto the steel. Um, I took a piece of stainless steel tubing, uh, just long enough for the bolt to fit through and uh, so it's just long enough for the threads to stick out the other end of the bolt of the uh, tube and then put a uh, couple of washers on the end and just hold it on with a nut. Then I, I also took and uh, wrapped that piece of stainless steel tubing in some electrical tape. Uh, really, you don't need to do this. I just did this to, to really give me a little bit of cushion, uh, kind of a... A more comfortable handle to hold while I'm etching the steel and all I did was take the bolt slide it through the the tubing um, put your washers on the end actually this washer goes on first then your tube another washer and hold in place with a uh, with just a nut so you ended up with something something along these lines again you don't need this this tubing you could do it with just the bolt I just did it to to make the handle a little more a little more comfortable to hold um, then I take just some gauze pads that I got from Walgreens you can get them any pharmacy supermarket um, it's a small gauze pad um, I use these for We've got one here, I'll show you. Take the gauze pad, you put it over the end of your wand that you made. And then I've got just an O-ring. Uh, you could use a rubber band, whatever you have. And the idea is just to make the gauze pad, just hold the gauze pad in place over the end of your bolt, like this. Then, um, need some alligator clips. I go on to your battery charger and you're going to need some salt water so I've just got a salt water solution and literally I just put salt in here and shake it up until the salt's dissolved and then I'll put more salt shake it up until this literally will not hold any more salt um, okay guys so I've got just a scrap piece of steel I don't have any blades that are ready to be etched just yet, uh, but this will work just fine. So you want to make sure you clean your steel. I just use acetone. Um, to make sure you get off any grease, dirt, fingerprints, oils, anything like that that might be on the steel because that will affect your etching process. So just get that nice and clean. 
I'm going to take a, a dry rag after I clean it with the acetone just to get any residue that the acetone may have, may have left behind. Once you get that nice and clean, just make sure you don't touch it again with your bare hands. Um, you're going to need a stencil or whatever you're going, whatever pattern you're going to be etching. I use these. Uh, I have a vinyl plotter, so I just cut my own maker's mark out on vinyl. Um, you can get stencils made. You could go to a sign shop, um, have them cut out some some vinyl decals for you. Um, several options you could do to get to get your hands on some of these in, in whatever pattern you're wanting to etch. So I just take one of these stencils. and lay it on the steel where I want to etch it. Let's put it up here in the corner. Make sure you press it down good and tight. There's no gaps between the steel and, and the stencil. At least that's how you do it with vinyl. I think the uh, if you get stencils made, um, you just kind of have to hold it in place. It's not going to stick. But um, You want to tape off any remaining edges or exposed steel that anywhere you don't want an etch on your steel, you want to cover it up. I just use blue painter's tape. Works pretty good. And anywhere that you get this solution, anywhere this solution touches bare steel, it's going to etch. So... I'm going to make sure you cover up any bare metal that you do not want to be etched. If you're doing a knife, make sure you go over the top of the spine because um, I have accidentally etched the spine of my knife before. Not paying attention. Okay. Once you got that nice and sealed. You're going to take your battery charger and the black or negative side is going to go onto the wand that you just made or out directly onto the bolt. Your positive or red side is going to go onto some expo an exposed part of the steel so make sure you leave some of the steel exposed so you can make this connection. Plug my charger in. I got just a, a little glass here that I'm going to put the salt water solution in. And you're going to want an extra rag to uh, to clean up any extra solution that gets on your wand here. Um, just take your salt water solution. Just put a little bit in glass. You don't need much. Just going to lower this in here. Let that gauze pad soak up some of that salt water. Take your extra rag and clean up, or just pull out that excess water. Your goal is you want it, you want this damp, but not so much when you put pressure on it that it's going to squeeze water out. You just want it moist, damp. When you get it to that stage, you're literally just going to apply it to your stencil, and you'll notice. Um, as we do this, this will start to turn black. That's actually pulling the carbons out of the steel. And I usually hit this for about three seconds and then let off. You're going to want to let let off to this will build up some gases underneath uh, underneath your wand and the steel, and you're going to want to release those little those little gases. So and and you also don't want to get your template too hot, uh, especially on the vinyl. As you're etching, the steel will heat up and get get warm. If you get your template too hot, it's gonna 
start to kind of melt on you. So I'm going to go ahead and dip this again just to make sure we're good. And like I say, hit it for about three seconds and then I'll let up. And as you can see, it's already pulling the pattern out of the steel. Um, it's just a guessing game on, on how many times you want to hit it. I usually go, I would say about 20, 25 times. Um, the more you do it, the deeper et of an etch you're going to get. So um, I like to go fairly deep into the steel. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to wear off easily. Um, so the more you hit it, the deeper it's going to go into the steel. And I'll go through this process and uh, I'll show you what we got. Okay, I think that'll about do it. As you can tell it's pulled a lot of carbon out of the steel. Um, you want to make sure you got a bunch of these things. Every time you do this, you're gonna you're gonna want to replace this with a brand new one before you start your next uh, your next steel, your next etching. So we'll pull this off. Turn my charger off. Take our tape off and see what we got. So you're gonna notice when it comes off the edge, I mean, it looks decent the way it is, but you can you can see it's kind of it's got you know some of that carbon built up down in there, and it it's kind of wonky looking. So what I like to do is get some Windex and a toothbrush. Okay, so I got some Windex and my toothbrush and what I like to do is just squirt this with a little bit of Windex just clean that out with your toothbrush it's gonna get all that black steel carbon steel out of there or the carbon that came out of the steel it's just gonna kinda shine it up a little bit and you can still tell there's a little bit of it kind of looks like it's burned almost around around where you etched so i'll take some high grit sandpaper this is a, some thousand grit sandpaper and just lightly sand that if you have a belt sander or a 2x72 grinder um, you could do it on that as well. It's really just as easy to do it with your hand. Just takes a second, just very light sanding over the top of it. And hit that with some more Windex. Just clean that up. And that's what we got, guys. It's really that simple. Uh, after you hit it with sandpaper and you clean it with Windex, it really does give you a nice, crisp, clean, clean etch. And in my opinion, it's one of the simplest ways to to get a permanent mark on a piece of steel uh, with just some very basic, simple tools. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, hopefully, that helped uh, some of you out if you've been trying to figure out how to etch your mark onto a piece of steel. 
uh, or how to make one. Maybe, you, you know, if you're like me, I, I like to save money where I can and, and make my own tools when and where I can. And this is just a real simple, cheap way uh, to be able to put a, a really clean, permanent etch onto a piece of steel. So hopefully that helped you out. And uh, appreciate you watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.